This is The Focus Group. Negotiation. This is what you do in business. With Tim Bennett. Fuck her up, buttercup. And John Nash. We never give up. It's the savvy side of 9 to 5. Who knew business talk could be so much fun? Welcome to The Focus Group. I'm John Nash. And as always, I'm joined by my very good friend and co-host, Tim Bennett. In solid blue today. Solid blue. I got the check shirt. Hey, for all information about Focus Group, just visit our website, focusgroupradio.com. We list all the platforms we're on. We're coming to you live right now on Facebook and on YouTube, and the show will be always there, available if you miss the live broadcast. And, of course, we're on iTunes, Stitcher, uh, Google Play, Reverie, the whole bit. Anyway, focusgroupradio.com. <laughs> that was the new that was the Can't new control thing. yourself. Um, there's a number here in the studio. It's 877-962-6846. Call whenever you want. Our call screener is Garrett. And actually, we have John and Garrett in the booth, our technicians. John's very bright and red today. Bright red. He's got a cobra. Well, he says he looks like he works at Target. <laughs> <laughs> Allie says he works at Target. Looks like he works at Target. You know the Target, they wear the red shirt yeah, and the khaki pants. You know, I remember um, <laughs> SNL did a, J Justin Timberlake guest hosted, and they did it. There was a, he always could come on down to da da da, whatever, come on down to Burritoville, whatever. I mean, he would do that right. song bit, but then he always would the Target guy. I forget the name of the woman, the actress who played opposite him, but they were, uh, he did the Target thing. Before so. that, they used to always do Gap. Is the gap, gap parody, guys, didn't the gap girls. He'd be full yeah. of the t-shirts the whole bit. All the little parodies. So, uh, big show today. We are going to be welcoming our good friends Derek and Romaine to the show. We have uh, not seen them since we appeared on their broadcast about a month ago. Yeah, how long did you stay there, by the way? I had to leave. I stayed to the bitter end. You can you can control yourself. No, no, we were having a great having conversation. A I and I love the studio. We'll talk about it when they're here. They're going to be here around one twenty-five. Uh, be sure to uh, call or send in your questions, and we're going to have a great conversation with them. And here we are in June, Pride Month. Is the Pride Leprechaun? Happy Pride! Happy Top Pride! Top of the Pride to you. Are you doing Pride this year, Mr. Nash? I will be doing Pride, yes. I'm marching with Bob for his company. You are? Yeah. Well, yeah. good for you. I've always wanted, I've not done, I walked one time in the New York Parade. <laughs> Why? Get, well, first, cap is a smart idea if it's a sunny day. Are they going to, maybe they'll no, supply they, they something. They supply t-shirts. Um, well, ask Bob if they'll supply a cap. I, 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 Are you going to wear Speedos? Because don't they do work with Speedo? They do work with Speedo. Are you going to wear a Speedo on the float? Dance like a go-go boy? We, we want people to attend the parade, not run. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the one of the very first Pride Parade I went to in New York in the late 80s. I finally left. It was so long. Yeah. It's, and it, they were down to, and I'm, I know you're going to think I'm making it up, but the banner said, gays and lesbians who like Patsy Cline. And then there was, you know, gays and lesbians for electricity. I, for electricity. <laughs> I was like, now we're down to the. <laughs> That's when you look at your watch, you're like. And it's, you know, it's 530 at that didn't, point. I, I don't remember. I don't remember it being quite that long. I remember you ever stayed at the very end? Uh, no, it's been a long actually. time. That's, yeah, that's no, a good point. We, we'd I, come I up would, from we'd always do the, so. the uh, moment of silence, yeah. and we'd watch the, the which is the beginning, the quilt and the rainbow flag go by, and of course there was uh, the dikes on bikes. Yeah, they lead it off, lead it off, and, and there was some of the. Are big, they topless in New York when they do it? Sometimes, yeah, and then there were the big uh, bar floats. Back in the day, yeah. it was splash. The splash floats come in. Woo! It's going to be hot boys and. That's what you want to see. Those well, are Philadelphia, ones. when I came, so, and they used to have city contingents come in from around the country, I guess. And Philadelphia had, if anyone's familiar with Philadelphia, were famous for the Mummers, which is New Year's Brigade. You always wanted to get me which, down there. Which um, is similar to Mardi Gras in, in New Orleans in terms of the, the festive dress and so forth. And a bunch of us from Philadelphia were watching the parade, and we heard a Mummers band, and we couldn't believe it. But the bar at the time, the big bar, in Philadelphia at the time, which still is Woody's, Woody's. had rented or paid for the, one of these big mummers bands to come up with all the plumes and <sighs> and uh, dresses and full regalia. And the whole crowd went wild because it's a string band and they play great music and they march. And it, it was a lot of fun. Everyone, It was actually a great people were saying, wow, I look at Philadelphia's contingent. You know, it was it was wow. pretty, pretty cool thing. But I'm glad you're doing it. I would like to uh, someday I think I should march. I don't know, Philadelphia, I, they have a parade, but I don't even know when it is. We were talking about this at lunch. And by the way, we, uh, we went to uh, Suprema. Is that the, Garrett, is it Suprema Pizza? 
New York Pizza Suprema. New York, thank you. Yeah. Brand is important. New York Pizza Suprema. And it's one of the places that have been recommended as like the best. Well, it had, I don't know if you read the card. I was reading the card while you were getting the slices. It said some guy, his last name was Hagendorf or Hagendorf or something. Or Dozendorf. What's your friend's last name upstate? Something Dorf? Ozendorf. Ozendorf. And he had, it wasn't him, but it was uh, somebody with that last name, said they had gone to 362 different <sighs> New York top. pizza. It was his number one favorite. Number one favorite. 362. I will say it was good, but what did I say to you? That I thought it wasn't any better than the, the pizza we get in the Penn, Penn Station. Station. Garrett said the same thing, though, when I brought it up. He said it's, it's, it's good pizza, but it yeah. might not be the best pizza you've ever it's good. had. Yeah, but it was good. But you can't beat New York pizza, Connecticut pizza. Same with bagels, hard mm -hmm. rolls, that sort of thing. Like you can't get a cheesesteak outside of Philly for whatever reason. They're, they're just not made the same. So as we veered off on Pizza Land, we were talking about not even knowing the date for Pride. Right. In, and I said to you that... I, yeah. Who that? <laughs> that's him, Colin Hagendorf. That's okay, Colin, Hagendorf. Seriously? So he's the guy that's reviewed all the pizza. Right, he went to every pizza place in Manhattan, apparently, or in the New York Five, five you know, Bureau area. He looks thin as a rail, too. This is so not fair that I he gets that. to test pizza and looks like this super thin guy. Does he have a black eye? No, it's a shadow. Oh. It's just a shadow. Does he have a black Yeah. You know why he got the black eye if he had a black eye? Yeah, yeah, see, I, how dare you say our pizza wasn't the best pizza? I see those rings on his fingers and I think dirty. Those rings are dirty. <laughs> how do you get Because dirty? people that wear all those guys that wear those kind of rings are usually dirty, They're like the dirty fingernail crowd. The dirty finger. No, the one they're drinking a craft beer and they got the hat on. They're living over in Williamsburg. Well, now they're in Philadelphia, they're in Gerard Avenue area in Fishtown. What is Gerard? A is that that's, down by that's the, our Williamsburg? That's your Williamsburg. Yeah, it's where all the hipsters are. Where it's ninety degrees and they got a knit cap on, dirty fingernails, and drinking a craft beer with a lot of rings. I don't like it. Looks dirty to me. It reminds me of a week or two ago, you said something, and I said, uh, my response was, Tim doesn't hold a grudge. Tim doesn't profile. <laughs> no I always profiling profile. you. But isn't that what, but the, uh, stereotypes happen for a reason. reason. Isn't that what everybody always says? So I'm sorry, I got you off on a tangent about pride. What were you, well, no, what was we, your point? No, that we were simply unsure of all other yeah. city weeks, you know, and what, what and it, it's something that Tim and I are gonna be talking about as the month goes on. Well, you and I have advocated it should be the last Sunday of or the last or, Sunday in June. Next, next to last? or the, oh, the last Sunday in June. That way it's easy. It's like the last yeah, Monday in Memorial Day. The last, fact, the last Monday in May is Memorial Day. The last Sunday in June should be Pride. You could turn that into, um, it could kind of be like, you know how we have Black History Month in February. Maybe you make June Gay History Month with the holiday being... 28th. The 28th. The last which, which corresponds with or is close to when the riots Stonewall. started at Stonewall in 1969, which happened on June 28th. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so you could, anyway, that's why we're marketing, guys. Who's on the phone? Billy? Billy. Hey, Billy. Uh, I can make a suggestion, John. Earplugs for Pride March. <laughs> earplugs? Why should he wear earplugs? We don't hear um, anything. If you ever get stuck between a Caribbean band for the whole day, you will wish you had earplugs. A Caribbean band. Were you yeah, marching, Billy? Billy? Yes, I'm marching again this year with the National Gay Pilots Association. Oh, good for you. Hey, Billy, did I see something on Facebook that you won at a, uh, an, a an antique car show recently? Yeah, but I, it wasn't so much the trophy. It was the smoothie maker. <laughs> yeah, you won a smoothie maker. And, and what car did you win for? Uh, the 48. The Pontiac. Oh, the Pontiac for you, because Billy has an incredible collection of, of, of cars. And that, well, I, I wouldn't say it's incredible. I, I, I always want to adopt one more. Well, how, how many do you have? Uh, four. Four is, four. four is enough four to is keep enough. up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, then there's the airplanes, too, and tractors. You know, us country gays, we have to have our toys, too. <laughs> wait, 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 there's the airplanes and then the tractors. Wait, do, you have a, do you have, like, a private uh, single-engine plane sort of thing? Yes, I have that, and uh, my father's old twin Apache. Can you fly me to Ohio out of at a Plymouth meeting, Pennsylvania? <laughs> I don't think you can afford the gas. <laughs> How much is gas? I'm just tired of the drive. Oh God, it's it's nuts now. It's hitting five dollars a gallon again. Oh, aviation yeah. fuel is differently processed than normal gasoline, right? Yes, it's separated because it has lead in it. It has lead in it. Okay, so that's like buying boating gas, like when you have a yeah, boat. Yeah. But I'll tell you, it works great your lawnmower. 
Well, thanks for calling, Billy. Thank I'm going to get Billy. John airplugs. Uh, I'm going to carry a pair. You have a very smart idea. They're the little two little foam things you put in your pocket in yep. case you're behind the Caribbean band. <laughs> so what caught your eye, Mr. Bennett? What caught your eye? Here is what Tim and John found. Well, in honor of Gay Pride Month, which is June, so kicking off June, today being June 7th, I, uh, I saw this headline. This actually came from a listener who sent this in. Oh, excellent. So Chris in Detroit sent this to us. And... Uh, the headline reads, Drag Queens Will Read to Kids at the Cherry Hill Library, and it sounds like a lot of fun. So Cherry Hill, New Jersey is right outside of Philadelphia. It's a suburb of Philadelphia. And so the, the public library there is hosting something they're calling Drag Queen Storytime to celebrate LGBT pride in the month of June. So it's a, a pair of Philadelphia uh, area drag queens, which call themselves the Sheer Sisters, wearing fabulous outfits and reading to the kids. What possibly could go wrong? Oh, boy. I'm already thinking about two or three things. So 25 families have signed up. Ten others are on the waiting list. The event's going to be June 19th, if you're interested and want to get on the waiting list. And uh, they're actually trying to book more dates because they are, have more and more people that are interested. But, of course, the conservative response has been quite different. So there is a group called the Acculturated and National Review are not fantastically, are fantastically, it says, happy about this sort of thing. The conservative publications are running an essay by Amelia Hamilton, author of Growing Patriots, which is a series of children's books bemoaning the very notion of drag storytelling and saying it's un-American. The essay assails recent drag queens at the library happenings in Brooklyn and elsewhere. And it turns out that there's even a drag queen story hour organization, John, if you're interested. And they said this is the latest salvo in a sinister liberal indoctrination campaign that somehow crowds out all the content that we'd prefer our little ones to be exposed to. Like what? Well. Like, so if a drag queen read The Little Engine That Could, mm -hmm. I think I can, I think I can, right? Like, <laughs> ooh, ooh, <laughs> like ooh. how is that crowding out? What what book are they crowding out? Johnny Tremaine? She said she illustrates and she illustrates her essay with a photo. And here's an SAT word, John. I had to look it up. Of a rather scary queen who's phantasmagoric. Phantasmagoria, yeah. Okay. Phantasmagoric. Do you know what that is? Well, phanta is it P-H? Nope. It's uh, P-H-A-N-T-A-S-M-A-G-O-R-I-K. Yeah, it's kind of like a cross between horror and something else, right? No, well, they say it's make-believe out of this world. Uh, phantasmagoria. Phantasmagoric regalia includes ferocious blue eyeshadow. And that says, and then she has below the picture, your tax dollars are paying for drag queens to read stories to our children. So the, the library responded and said that, in fact, um, these are volunteer. Uh, the drag queens are volunteers. There's no agenda. And they said the feedback has been great. It's, uh, it's not that you come here and you're going to get some sort of political activism thrown at you. She said she received emails from other parents saying that they love the idea and they want to try to get, uh, get more dates on the calendar. She said, uh, the librarian said, it's mostly about entertainment and the outreach has nothing to do, again, with being political. She said, uh, we're not going to be talking about gender fluidity and all those highbrow issues. You're it's reading just, a book It's to just a kid. kids getting together with someone who's dressed up. It could be in the same vein as anybody in a storybook uh, costume. She says, we want to create an atmosphere where children can learn that they don't have to feel afraid or threatened by people who look different than them. She says that's the over the overriding key point, and um, so I thought it was great. I was wondering though how so the the book that they're thinking of reading because they're, they're having a contest is Worm Loves Worm. Is that a by Harper Collins? It's a okay. popular choice. Uh, it's a thirty minute read. So um, well, I'm wondering boy, when that, this is all going to stop though because it, I have a niece who just started teaching in the school systems in Connecticut in the public school systems and I was unaware they're not allowed to do anything Christmas related anything around the Jewish holidays uh, they don't do the pledge of allegiance anymore they do none of because you and I would have been cast out on our katukas for a Yiddish word um, I mean Christmas? You can't have a Christmas concert. Well, you might offend somebody. We had, I mean, our the high school revolved around, you know, Christmas so, concert. Yeah, so I don't know. It's, it's and sad. And let's so, not forget the time you dressed me as a Christmas tree in Carl Borges' class. We plugged me in the front of the room, and there you go. Yeah, so that was what caught my eye. Well, mine... Drag queen reading hour. And by the way, the drag queen reading hour, let's, let's be real here. 
the kids will be entertained simply because it's someone in a costume. They don't care who the, right? They don't, yeah. kids don't care. Anyway, let's, what I'm glad are. you got, all right, so mine was different. Um, and the headline reads, Republican mayor, colon, Asians, gays, and Jesus will save our city. <laughs> So uh, a Republican mayor of a California town struggling to revitalize itself believes he has a solution to attract the gay and Asian populations. So Mayor Rex Paris of the city of Lancaster, part of Los Angeles County. Um, I'm going to switch here to the iPad because this story was originally reported in Vice. And the way they kicked the article off is a little different because they describe Lancaster in the following, they don't describe it in this piece, but they said Lancaster is, desert, is a desert town in the fringe of LA County, population 160,000, an area best known for neo-Nazis and meth labs. <laughs> Crowned the worst city in LA County and the most stressful city in California, Lancaster has a serious PR problem, one that Mayor Rex Paris hopes to solve. Now he's a lawyer, he's in his second term there, and he believes, and he has said, that good things happen when you're able to increase your Asian population. When you increase the Asian population to a certain threshold, and he was interviewed, good things happen. Crime rates go down, education levels go up. I don't disagree. <laughs> Interestingly, the same thing happens with the gays. With the gays, yeah. And that's why he put the new performing art, Lancaster Performing Arts Center right downtown. <laughs> the gays downtown. So. He could do a double whammy and get gay Asians. Gay Asians, gay Asians right, who are Christian. Then you'd really get right. You'd, well, woo. so um, he, on top of this, he's enticed China's biggest electric vehicle manufacturer to set up a factory in Lancaster. And he wanted to enroll immigrant Chinese parachute kids at Lancaster schools. He tried to fund the cash-strapped local hospital by courting wealthy Chinese birth tourists, but he got some pushback for that. He's in talks to build a 10-story statue of the Buddha as a tourist attraction. I, I'm telling you, Lancaster is shining as a beacon for Tim and John. I'd visit. On a future road trip. Perhaps it's the Atlas. Perhaps it's the Tiguan. Uh, the gays and the Asians aren't the only reason Paris believes his city is on the comeback. Crime is down, actually, by 42%. Um, he believes that their fight against the ACLU for the right to begin their city council meetings with a prayer to Jesus is also helping the city rebuild. When people ask us to justify the expense of public funds on these court cases, it's easy for us to do, Paris says. We just point to the results. Crime dropped 42%, gang violence down 85%. The economy in our communities just took off. The people of Lancaster don't have any doubt as to how this occurred. We have proclaimed to the world that we are a Christian city, and when we did this, things changed. A Christian city that wants Asians and gays. With a Buddha. With a Buddha and a prayer to see. Beyond your dreams, plant, car plant. This We're going to change great. this meth city, this down on its luck city. So, Republican mayor, I, hey, guess what? Mayor Rex Paris, hey, if he puts a performing, if you pro, pro, put a performing arts center in, that, great. Don't don't expect the gays to come. I mean, it's an interesting stereotype, right? Let's performing arts center. The gays are going to come, right? Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> well, I, there's so many things I could say, but I'd be in trouble. <laughs> well, we have the drag queen story time at the library, yeah. and we have Rex ba M Mayor Rex Barrett's attracting Asians, Buddha, the ten story Buddha statue in the performing arts center. So I'll just move us along to the business birthday. <laughs> Everyone does celebrity birthday greetings, but the Focus Group is the only show in the universe that celebrates business birthdays. Yes, that's right. We're still the only show, as far as we know. In that's the, what known the, the, the universe. known universe. Did you say solar system? Or I always got I it wrong. Why not go to universe? We have no idea universe. how far the show beams, right? So. so on June 8th, which is tomorrow, Thursday, celebrating 70 years, is Michael Citrick. I didn't know who he was. Do you know who he is? Michael Citrick. Um, I looked at the deck, and I'm guessing he's a, some kind of power agent. Right? He's the king of the PR crisis. Oh, okay. So he so he's, helps you in a bind. Right. He's okay. founder and chairman and chief executive officer of the Citrick Company, which is an internationally recognized strategic and communications firm. He has been the subject of numerous articles focusing on the results that he has achieved for his clients since its founding 28 years ago. Did you do that? What? Did you put in with the sunbeams coming out of his head, or did you find that I've, picture? I've, I've found it somewhere. You always find great. That, that's, that's like him. Yeah. 70 today. 
70. Tomorrow. Okay, tomorrow. Since the founding, he has over a thousand different clients and companies, including some of the world's largest corporations, as well as scores of high profile individuals who use him routinely or just for one offs, mostly for sensitive matters. A lot of times you don't even know that uh, he's, he's working he's, for them. Okay. So he's largely um, concentrated in the world of business. However, a lot of his clients now also revolve around individuals in sports, entertainment, academia, healthcare, religion, and politics. And uh, although many of his c cases have dominated the headlines, the ones that you've never heard about, where his firm has able to keep his clients out of the media or off the internet, are equally as noteworthy. The uh, so you also wrote a book called "How to Turn the, or Turning the Power of the Press to Your Advantage." It was called "Spin." Was the name of the book. So some of his clientele in 2002, David Duchovny had hired him to represent him uh, during a dispute he was having related to uh, breach of contract for the X Files TV show. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, the Roman Catholic Church in Los Angeles, the Archdiocese <laughs> hired him for what for uh, the sexual, the children, the child sexual abuse uh, scandal. He also advised uh, Roy Disney when they were trying to get rid of Michael Eisner. Yeah. Uh, helped Hewlett Packard. Paris Hilton had hired him for a brief time while she was in jail to try to make sure she was getting positive press. Bare Naked Ladies, Stephen Page of Bare Naked Ladies hired him because he was a DUI arrest. It goes on and on and on. Jeffrey Epstein, who was a uh, convicted sex offender who rekindled a friendship with Prince Andrew, is also a client. Allegedly, Epstein hasn't paid his bill, but she still owes $103,000. Oh, that's a, well. So he's, he's helped Papa John's get over. So he made a, a, some ridiculous comments about Obamacare. They tried to help. But so he has, um, from Fortune magazine, they call him the uh, one of the most accomplished practitioners on the dark side of PR. The LA Times call him the wizard of spin. Forbes calls him the flack when you're under attack. And uh, they said he really is the person to go to because of his ability to play the media to the client's advantage. And so I was wondering whether Trump might have called him yet. <laughs> no, no, no. Trump's handling all his own PR with his Twitter account. So happy birthday, Michael. I never heard of him, but I guess we you, those those that do that sort of thing. Gloria Allred was one of the, was she was an attorney though, a wasn't power she? Power attorney, especially for women. Yeah. She would represent uh, women in, in a lot of different. This cases. guy's uh, when, if you're in a crisis, contact Michael. But apparently, it's apparently, costly. That, that's probably like that back channel Hollywood stuff. Like mm -hmm. you know, there's someone's in an office. Like you need to contact. Well, I posted the pictures. They they listed a lot of his clients. So what, that's one Rush slide Limbaugh that was, was one of them. Right when he had the pill problem. Pill problem. Yeah. Well, well when he or yeah, <laughs> he's making Bobby Bryan. You know, yeah, there's a whole bunch of them that had issues. M &M. Every, you know, everybody has an issue now and then. So. So everybody's a meltdown, right? Yeah. So that was that. Not bad. All right. So uh, Deep Discount is a uh, partner of, here, of ours here on the Focus Group. We love working with them. We have a ball doing our segment with them because um, I'm kind of a media whore. Let's just let's just be let's call let's call it what it is, right? I love movies and TV. This falls into our lap. We're like I get to talk about movies and TV. June is a site-wide sale. Everything at this DeepDiscount.com uh, site is on sale in June. And we're going to give you a little sampling of some of the stuff that's going on. To get to Deep Discount, go to focusgroupradio.com, click on their link, the little shark, arr, the shark, and John just put up the sale arr. site. Um, so a couple things that Tim and I thought, since June is, a, is Pride Month and yep. it's a site-wide sale, they gave us free reign to kind of talk about whatever we want to talk about. And the marketing team at Deep Discount is fantastic. They saw our segment last week. We were talking about LGBT-specific titles Tim and I both picked some of the influential movies that we saw in our younger days. I want to continue that trend. Um, but before that, the folks at Deep Discount want you to know that there is an LGBT section of the site. They said they sent an actual link along for those titles. John will put that up. There we go. And we got the rainbow. <laughs> oh. Look at that. You that know, pretty? I'm going to tell you something. There are a lot of movies you may never have heard of, and they're at a price point where I would just buy a couple. You know, gay cinema is interesting. It runs the gamut from superb to okay. You know, like as with most all, of it's bad with all movies. But yeah, you, you'll find you something think? you like. I, I, I'm of the opinion that there are a lot of well-intentioned movies. Is that a good way? That's a nice way. Of <laughs> did you talk to Citric. <laughs> Phantasmagoric. Yeah, right? Phantasmagorical. So, what we did is we went through and picked some of our our personal titles. Tim. One of Tim's favorite movies, and I'll let you you do this. So I picked Ferris Bueller's Day Off, and I wouldn't say, you know, I, I would say 
me as a... Why'd you pick it? Well, I picked it because June 5th was actually the 32nd anniversary of him taking the day off. So somebody's actually really dug into the movie. It's a John Hughes movie, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. And they were able to tell by the baseball game that they saw against the Atlanta Braves and the Chicago Cubs. Somebody actually studied the uniforms and the score and everything and figured out it was June 5th. Uh, 1985 is when that was actually filmed. But uh, he wrote that screenplay in three months. Three months. Or uh, one week, and then it took him three, three months, months to, to film it. And it only cost $5 million was the budget. But look at the, it's one of your favorite movies. This is one of my favorite movies because I love the antics. A lot of it reminded of, of me with the way you and I grew up in high school and kind mm-hmm. of some of the um, harmless antics you and I would play. So I did see it on there. It's also part of a collection. There's some John Hughes collections, if you like, Pretty in Pink and 16 Candles yeah, and a bunch classic, of the other classic, classic 80s with... Molly Ringwald also and some of those characters. And you did this thing where you picked something for me, which I thought was very nice. Collectible. So I went through to find a mug for you. And I said if I was going to buy one mug, when John was in high school, John did a Super 8 movie of Mr. Bill. You remember it was Super 8. So everyone else did some sort of, it was a talent show for the senior class, and everyone did something on stage. And then John set up a little, John actually made a movie. And I, do you have that movie? I do still have the Super you should 8 movie. See if and you I could should get digitize it, it yeah. because... So there was a Mr. Bill, Mr. Bill cup that I found on there that I thought would be uh, good for you. There's a lot of Star Trek and sci-fi stuff, but I, I thought know, that I, one... I am so glad you found that because I, I that laughed would be a good so hard when you. I saw it. Now, for Tim, I picked something. You know how last week Tim wanted to talk about Deep Discount has sells turntables, right. which are on sale, site-wide Did sale. Did you find one? I, it, this isn't a turntable. It's for the turntable. So, John, click on that tab there. This is a, a, a piece of vinyl that's coming out on June 23rd. Deep discount will carry it. And if you had a turntable, you oh. could have it. It's the Go-Go's, the Go-Go's vacation. vacation. Do you still have the yeah. album? I, I, you know, I probably do in a crate. So this is I'm sure I do. I did have it unless it got vacations damaged. Vacation's all I ever want. I always loved that picture. Of course you did. And, and this, this was the movie that, de- this was an album that defined one of our summers. Yeah. In fact, a couple of summers. So when you get your turntable, you need to head over to Deep Discount, buy the vinyl you don't have. Wow. Of course, the price of the vinyl was an eye-opener to me. When we bought these albums when we were kids, what were they, like seven ninety nine? Do you guys remember how much an album used to be? Seven, eight bucks? Yeah. Now it's like 16 17 because well, it's harder. Harder, harder to get. Harder to get. Right. Uh, and uh, one last movie recommendation before we tell you what the new movie is this week is uh, a movie that I saw many years ago. It's one of Bob's favorites, too. It's called Beautiful Thing. It's a British film. Um, came out around the, about a year or two after My Beautiful Laundrette. It is, many people call it one of their favorite LGBT films. It's a, it's a sweet love story about two kids that live in a housing project. The Mama, um, Mama cast, the Mamas and the Papas, the soundtrack is fantastic. A lot of Mama cast, by the way, in, the, <laughs> in this movie. I like Mama but cast. For Pride Month, if you're thinking of picking up a title you might, might not have seen, but I, I can guarantee you you'll like it. In fact, I almost would promise you your money back if you don't. I'm almost promising that. <laughs> well, I'm going to have to watch that. <laughs> You'd like it. It's a cute movie. And, and it, it's a really good, well-done British film so, about so, LGBT. And last but not so, least, go ahead, Tim. So going along with the theme of beauty, and I, I guess this is a, a gay movie, too. Beauty and the Beast is just released today. So the Disney movie Beauty and the Beast, a live-action retelling of the studio's animated classic, which refashions the classic characters from the tale of old time for a contemporary audience. Did you watch it? Made a boatload of money, the live action movie. And there was some controversy when it came out because the director claimed that he took the character of Gaston, who is the guy that goes after the beast, and there was some kind of undertone of gay relationship between the Gaston character and someone else in the movie. Everybody was up in arms. That's perfect. Um, but I am a fan of the animated film, but since this did so well at the box office, I'm thinking of picking it up because I've read that they've they added songs and they, it's a very different looking film than the animated film. Oh. So watch what you want to watch when you want to watch it. Head over to Deep Discount by going to focusgroupradio.com. Click on the uh, Deep Discount icon there and then order away. There's tens of thousands of stuff. And when you go through the Focus Group Radio site, we get uh, acknowledgement that uh, that you're a supporter of them as they support us here on the Focus Group. Thanks, Deep Discount. <laughs> that was your so, cue. You looked at Gary. See me. So uh, we're going to take a take a quick break. We've got a video we're going to show about a modified Volkswagen Beetle, which has turned into a camper. So it's a pretty cool thing in Alberta, Canada. While we do that, we're setting up for the uh, the infamous Derek and Romain will be joining us here live on the focus group so stay with us and you can call in and talk to dnr that's going to be 877-962-6846 and 
Stay with us. DNR. Do we need to say anything more? No. <laughs> Brought to you by Volkswagen. Visit VW.com to learn more. Just set your heart to (laughs) pitter-pattering. Very distinctive sound for sure, and Superbugger has that sound with the engine still in the back. This is our (laughs) Superbugger. It's uh, on a 1968 VW Beetle, and uh, the conversion was in 1977, featured by Mechanics Illustrated. And actually, there's a Superbugger on the front of that June issue. So it is on an original Volkswagen chassis. It's got all the original running gear, engine, suspension, all that. But they, they literally cut it off right off at the windshield and took all the metal away and then uh, reinforced the floor pan. And then, and then built the kit on top. Kids, you know, think it's cool, but it's actually adults, I think, that have grown up with the beetle and the beetle phenomenon that are just like, wow, that's amazing. It's got two bucket seats, and then, of course, it's got the bench seats beside the table. So you have to sit at the table, actually, to use the stove. The stove's at the back. It's a little two-burner stove. You have to sit down in the seat at the table, and then you reach back to use the stove. Friends of ours had brought it up from Arizona and uh, he knew that I was a a VW nut and so he brought it over and he actually allowed me to drive it in the parade that here in Rimby and it was just, you almost feel giddy, (laughs) like you just can't even help. Even now you get in it and you, you meet people and you wave and you just, you pretty much have a smile on your face the whole time you're driving it. If you can read lips, some of the things people say as you're driving by, we'd taken it to Red Deer for supper one night, and it's like swear words, but like, holy cow, (laughs) what is that? (laughs) Now, back to the Focus Group with Tim and John. Glamour today is nothing but a tight skirt, loose hips, and wet lips. An entertaining look at the world of business. Make it work. Make it work. Make it work. Make it work. 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 Hey, welcome back to the Focus Group. John Nash with Tim Bennett and sitting with us in our fabulous, what what is this called? Daytime studio? Daytime, right, midday. Midday coffee show. (laughs) We have the infamous Derek and Romaine. Welcome to the show, guys. It's such a pleasure to have you here. Well, thanks. We're glad to be here. Last time we chatted with you, we were in your swanky new digs, and I've I'll tell all the people that are watching, they have a fantastic studio. And you moved to a bigger space, I think, since we were last saw you, right? Yeah, we were, were twice the size. Although we were, I'm going to tell you, I'll be honest, we were lifting up the couch cushions in here. Romaine was looking at all the wires. Yes. So, <laughs> you know, we're like these terrible nosy neighbors. Like, oh, let me see your coffee maker. Like, that's how we, that's how we were here. So, yeah. So you're wearing some finery, some Derek and Romaine. Uh, I love this merch. shirt. Uh, this is our DNR Colt uh, T-shirt. Um, Drink the punch. Yeah. It, well, it was designed by one of our listeners because the new Derek and Romaine show has kind of become a little bit of a cult. The listeners are so loyal and so passionate that uh, we let them design some of our merchandise wow. for us and they buy them and they wear them and it's <laughs> awesome. Although we have a lot of um, former listeners or we have a lot of listeners from our former platform we were both on, why don't we, for, for the new people out there, why don't you let us know about what you guys are doing since... Uh, since you rebooted, so DNR 2.0. Well, we're coming up on our two-year cancel anniversary. I can't believe it's been. <laughs> I haven't heard that cancel yeah. anniversary. Well, I we, love that he calls it that. I it's do. So, it's so sweet. And nice. we did a we did a video on YouTube last year for our one-year cancel anniversary. Our two years coming up, and uh, I'll probably cajole Romaine into a YouTube video for that again too, uh, just to let people you know catch up to where <laughs> we are. I'm trying things. to even say it. A cancel anniversary. Cancel anniversary. Well, okay. After he coined our, it. after um, <laughs> Sirius XM canceled our last show. We did a YouTube video like three days later and basically let people, we were live on YouTube, we let people make comments and Romaine and I basically assured everyone that we were fine and we hadn't we were, died. We hadn't died. We were going to figure out what we were going to do, yeah. uh, but we really honestly had not figured out yet what we were going to do. Uh, but it's nice to check in 
on our annual progress. We're coming up on two years. And um, uh, Romaine and I do a show very similar to the show that we did uh, before on Sirius XM. Uh, we're live two hours a day. We take calls. Um, the show uh, is available through our website, DerekRomaine.com. See the information uh -huh, there it up is. on the screen. <laughs> uh, and um, what's great about um, doing our own show this way is that we have you know, at Sirius XM, we only had our five most recent shows available for people to listen uh, through their app. Our shows, all, all of the shows we've done since we launched in January of last all year available. available. Yeah. Yeah. Hundreds of hours of shows. Uh, and every subscription comes with a private URL, and people can add that to their favorite podcast app. If you have an iPhone, podcasts, the I app is already I don't know you could do that. Loaded. Oh, yeah. You can oh, listen yeah. to it. You can live stream the show through your podcast app, and you can download <laughs> past episodes through it. So you can really take our show literally anywhere anytime it's i actually think it's more convenient to listeners now than it has ever been in all the years we've been doing radio have you found and we, john and i have experienced this since we've we rebooted as well is that more and more we were a slave to having the live show which is important mm -hmm. But so many people now seem to listen time shift. more, like we yeah, do with TV now, right? Yeah, time shifters, yeah. yeah. So d are you finding that as well, that even though you still feel... You're doing it live. You yeah. still do the live show, but there's still a, a, more and more people that will now take you and maybe binge listen on a weekend or something. I... I I, I, Romaine and I are, and I don't, we're very different people, but we <laughs> tend to be in a lot of agreement about our business, which I think is an import, important. That's one important good area to be. Yeah, business. I agree. I agree. <laughs> uh, but uh, and in this case, uh, we had a couple of lucky breaks. One is that our our previous show, Sirius XM, changed the schedule of our show right around the same time that they launched their app. And so for the last three years, I guess, we were doing our show at Sirius XM, we had a lot of people who were already time shifting through the Sirius mm -hmm. XM app. Okay. Downloading so the shows, listening them. later. <laughs> uh, so that, I think, was an advantage for us in launching the way that we did. We already had people who did that. But I, you know... I, Talk to my mother because she listens to the show a lot. She's our number one fan. And <laughs> but she also she prefers a live show. There's something about the dynamic between yeah. us, the yeah. you don't know what's going to happen next right. kind of dynamic of our show that a lot of people they like that it's live. So we wanted to make sure that we were able to make the show as available and convenient to people as possible, but also deliver this sort of I don't know what's gonna happen dynamic the show. And we have. we added elements to the live show to make it even more fun for the people who wanted to participate live. So, like, we have a live chat room that happens during the show where all these listeners get in there and they can communicate with one another and comment on whatever we're talking about while the show is happening and participate in a way they've never been able to do it before. And they can also watch us on, like, webcams. Um, and, you know, again, it's just utilizing the technology that's out there and exists and, you know, making our content that much better than it was before. But, in, but on that chat room idea, which I think is fantastic, it's, it's the difference between someone being in a car, uh, driving home from a late shift, what are they doing, and I'll call DNR because I, and that's one of your, their, your cool things is yeah. the accessibility that you guys, you're very accessible to your fans. We try to be. Because we're going to talk about cruising in a minute, too. <laughs> and not the kind of cruising I'm thinking well, of. But. It's cruising that goes out of the chat room, believe me. Uh, who monitors yeah. the chat while you're on well, air? Uh, why, are you guys doing that while uh, you're on we, we tend to, I, we both have it open, and... Usually, like, if Derek is telling a long story, I'll, I'll what? watch what's happening. <laughs> or if I'm on some kind of rant about my wife, Derek will pop in and take a look at, you know, what's happening in the chat room. So we definitely, you know, we look at those things, you know, intermittently while the show is happening because but, we can't be too distracted, although sometimes I get a little distracted. Yeah, Romaine can and get Derek gets mad. Then it's a whole different show. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's John. Yeah. Yeah. Same, yeah. John will do the thing. iPad because we, we'll do a game, and yeah. then he'll get engrossed in the iPad, and then it's like it's, you've got another whole show going on over it here really with John is, on the iPad. Yeah, so our chat room is a bit of the wild, wild west, uh, I'll admit, and, um, and in some ways it's great because it sort of is another... It has another life, and it's one thing that Romaine and I have noticed with our show over the years is that it ha it takes on a life of its own outside of what we are doing. And right. so we try to create opportunities where we can encourage that to happen because it is another component of the show that people enjoy. Uh, but it can get sloppy in there. We have On Fridays, we have Friday Nay, <laughs> where oh, people are drunk in the that. chat room. And uh, so... It can that can get a little out of control, but um, 
you know, the, the real thing is, is that we always have to keep in mind that because people are listening in so many different ways, there are people who are listening live in their car, or there are people who are time shifting, shifting. they're listening yeah. days or weeks later, uh, and then there are people who are very immediately in the chat room while it's going on. We don't want to have the show be too much for any one of those audiences, because like, if we spent a lot of time focused on what was happening in the chat room, the people who are listening three days later, right. they can't see. Right. They're not going to be relating to right. ripping yeah. their clothes off or whatever. So we do so have a little bit for yeah. everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Well, what um, John and I kind of fell, I don't just say fell, I guess we kind of fell into this uh -oh. format. We did fall into it. We, uh, we, we, yeah, we, we, we're, we're, I'm not going to lie. Do, we, we, we were looking for a studio audio. to do an right. audio podcast. Yeah. We walked in and saw all this. Right. And not prepared the first day we came in. We thought we were doing the radio yeah. show. And we came in and John's like, I hope you have, we were doing two shows. He goes, do you have a change of shirt? I said, no, I didn't know we were going to be doing two shows at the time. <laughs> had, had you had you guys thought of doing something in, or have you thought in the future of doing something like this where you might go live? So one of the things uh, that we did this year is we launched an internship program. We partnered with the Ali Forney Center, uh, which is a homeless LGBT youth center here in New York City. And we started bringing some of their clients in to be interns on our show. And as part of that, uh, we're always looking for new ways we can, you know, kind of give them technical training that they could take out into the real world and get a real job. So one of the things that I'm pushing for in the in the coming year is adding some video components uh, to the studio so that we can, in addition to teaching them audio, we can also teach them some video editing skills and things like that. Again, just trying to give more uh, experience to these young people and, you know, helping to elevate what we're already offering. On the Alley Forney, uh, and this is actually a good uh, kickoff for a series of questions I wanted to ask the two of you, because you guys have always been big, big, big supporters of the LGBT, LGBT community, specifically key centers and key service providers in certain cities, the, ri the bike rides. Yep. Um, and with the, the intern program, when you're talking about one of these uh, youth that are from the Alley Forney Center, um, where would you place them on a spectrum to a normal high school kid? Man, these kids... Um, is, is that a fair question? No, I think it's a totally fair question. And, you know, it's really interesting because we knew when we started taking interns from there, we, you know, when we were at the old company, we used to take college interns, who, kids who'd gone, you know, pretty privileged kids. And these kids are the complete opposite. Most of them are so eager to get this opportunity because it's their first real chance to kind of prove themselves in the work world. Most of them have never had a job. Most of them have not graduated high school. And so... Were they kicked out of their homes? A lot of them are LG. kicked out of their homes. Some of them, they choose to leave uh, foster care situations because it's so horrible. Uh, you know, we have some of them, when they first start with us, that they, they haven't gotten into the... kind I call it temporary permanent housing with the Ali Forney Center, where it's, you know, not the drop-in center where they try to get a bed every night. Some of them... That's where they're at when they first start with us. And so you don't know if they spent the night in the drop-in center that night or on a train all night long before they come into work. So the opportunities that this internship provides is really life-changing for some of these these youth. And, and I think that's part of why Derek and I really felt strongly about launching an internship program and specifically targeting uh, interns that we really felt we could have a huge impact on and I think I think it's been successful so far and hopefully we'll continue to do it well, for you're raising time. money this month is it locker candles is that yeah. how you say yes. it so tell us about that because you can people can donate to raise money <laughs> to well, I mean, I, you know, I'll take us back a step, actually, about the intern program. So when we first launched the show, we got contacted uh, by a longtime listener of our show on the old show. And then uh, she had become a subscriber of the new show, um, uh, Suzanne Collins. And she wrote us an email and she said, look, I love what you guys are up to. I have a private foundation. Um, how I really want to support you guys. How can I, how can we do something together? And I saw the email and I said, this has got Romaine written all over it. <laughs> um, and you know, when you, he did. that's exactly what he said when to me you, too. <laughs> when you have a partnership, uh, whether it's a radio show or any other kind of business, you know, or a marriage, you, you quickly realize where your strong suits are, where your interests are and that kind of thing. And, you know, with our old show, we raised more than a quarter of a million dollars Huge amount. for various yeah. charities oh, yeah. over the years. And Lots I got to be honest, that's Romaine. Like that's, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, she's the one who beat that. Mel, where's the check? <laughs> I, I love to get money. So yeah. what can I say? But even still, it's like <laughs> when Romaine is committed to making something happen, she makes it happen. Yeah, but... Even if that horse dies beating it across the finish line, <laughs> she is going to get there. And Thanks. so, you know, we didn't know what shape this uh, partnership with the Suzanne Collins Foundation was going to take. 
Suzanne Marcus Collins Foundation, their yes. actual official name, <laughs> um, before Suzanne writes. Yeah. Um, uh, but uh, anyway, so we didn't know. But one of the things we said is, you know, we want to do this. Sure, this is a great opportunity. We, like you guys did with this, with video, when you're launching something or relaunching something, you have to keep an open mind and just say, well, what are the opportunities available? What's the technology available? How yeah. can we how can we make this work? How can we make this better? And one of the components that we said was, well, we want to, if we do this, we want to create some way in which we can give back. And so we talked about doing this internship program. And at the time, we didn't know about the LEAP program that Ali Forne and the Gay Center in New York was doing. Um, but we, we wanted to commit to doing a paid internship program as part of having this studio space. How did you guys, when, when, you're, when you're having that discussion, yeah. let, let's do the internship program, did you actually have a set of tasks that you thought would be perfect for such a thing? Because it's an interesting, you guys are very close to how you produce your show and things have to be a certain way, not yeah. in a bad way, but there is a... So did you have it? about us sitting in Derek and Remain <laughs> order before we sat down? Yeah. Yeah. Did, yes, we are yes. very yeah. wedded to the way we do things. Well, and, yeah. John, it's yeah. the same it's thing. The same so way, yeah. so did you have, um, you, you knew you wanted to give back. Yeah. You had this this vehicle. The foundation could could get this going. You had an idea of what these people, you, you wanted these kids to be learning and doing? Yeah, I mean, because we had had inter interns at the old company. So we, we and we had developed a very specific ah. internship program. Ours wasn't like, oh, just go get us coffee or do this or do that like we we were very very proactive in teaching them how to edit teaching them how to produce a in other words show. they get on the they they use adobe audition oh. Yeah, yeah they, they, we have we have our audio interns clips for editing you guys. all the time. They're do, they're doing research. They're doing show prep. Like we we doing promos. Doing promos. We have them working, running the boards, and learning how to do all of those things. Wow. You know, and and it really is, and like because these interns are so green as as you would say. The the, the new the, the, the new, new batch. Yeah. I'm actually teaching them simple recording engineering things, so that if they go to a church or a local bar to you know get a job running boards for a concert or whatever they can do simple stuff like that as well so like you guys are really we, we've, with, we've built in, an entire in execution program. of this program you really thought oh yeah these are the skills that i want to give these we created interns. a textbook yeah I mean, <laughs> remain, and i you know i i appreciate you using the word we but uh, because in you know I, you know romaine and i think both will take credit for the overall work that we do but if you're talking about the day-to-day -day things with the intern program Rom, romaine really does that and that's not true we hired we hired a producer who helps well, with that. yes <laughs> I gotta give credit to Katie. <laughs> Katie, it's a, Katie. You know, lovely Romaine, Katie Castellano. Romaine had worked to build this uh, intern manual when we were at SiriusXM. Many of our former interns went on to careers in radio. Wow. So mm -hmm. we knew when we were built. Part of why we said, "Oh, we should do an intern program." It's because it was something that, with the old show, we had done fairly successfully. Uh, and when we discovered that we could partner with Ali Forney and the Gay Center here in New York uh, with their Leap program, uh, it was kind of a perfect opportunity for. Us to, it was sort of one of these things where you have this idea and then you discover, oh, it's going to be even easier to pull this together. Oh, yeah, that was. was the best part. Um, so <laughs> that uh, really but, was the best part. <laughs> but for us, it has always been about creating a really rigorous training. Yep. And we uh, our feeling is whether the interns go on to careers in radio or podcasting or YouTube giving them or whatever skills, yes. we know that when their internship ends, they will have a resume filled with high quality skills where they could, if they wanted to pursue some kind of career in media, that that would be open to them yeah. at whatever level. Now, I'm assuming these, these, these kids don't necessarily come with technology at their side. Most so. of them don't, but you know, they're millennials. So they do, I mean, they all have cell phones and usually it's a smartphone. Um, and so they do have a pretty good understanding of technology, uh, just because of their age. So, you know, but they don't, maybe they've never edited audio or things like that. So a lot of that is new to them, but they pick it up pretty quick, which is, you know, one of the nice things. I think I'm going to go be a neat turn. <laughs> <laughs> I can teach you a couple things. <laughs> I could use the help. Same here. Well, I could use John, you because yeah, I'm, John, the, te I'm the tech guy. The in this, in this, in I'm, this yeah, I, I think this is a really wonderful, th another another incredible example of DNR um, giving back and not just giving back. I mean, it's, it's, it's one thing to raise money and to give a big check. It's another thing to do exactly what you just said, where someone leaves working with you guys and they have actionable 
things on their resume that say I can do this. And it's an it's an at-risk LGBT youth, yeah. which I think is an amazing thing. But I just have to point out, we couldn't do it alone. I mean, if it wasn't for our listener Suzanne and for Ali Forney. the Ali Forney Center, but also our listeners. Our listeners, we did a we did what we call our season of giving, which is essentially a fund drive that, to go into the fund for this internship program. And our listeners raised an enormous amount of money. They all contributed because they understand what, what we're trying to accomplish. So realistically, we couldn't do it without the DNR listeners and without a lot of help. And, from and that's what, where I started with. So this candle, the Lochner yeah. candle. So is that is that a listener's company so as well? It is. It's a listener's company. And every year he uh, he makes these, these pride candles for the pride season. And this year they came to us and they said, hey, listen, we love your internship program. We really think what you guys are doing is special. Is there a way we can contribute to that? And I said, well, sure. We'll, we'll take every every donation we can get. We'll take it. I love money. <laughs> not for good shy. Guys. You're not picking yeah. up on yeah. it. Yeah. Right. Time and so that. I was like, yeah. Oh, certainly. Money. So uh, they created this special pride candle and five dollars for every candle that is made goes directly into the internship program, uh, you know, and it helps pay for, you know, the 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 costs associated with the internship program, including helping to pay for the actual hours for the interns. So if you go to DerekandRomaine.com, people can order and donate yep. there. It's right there on the main page. Now we're going to, John mentioned something earlier. We're going to take a quick break. We're with the infamous Derek and Romaine, and we're talking about their... Infamous. Infamous. Their show, of course, Derek and Romaine show. Do, is, do you say Derek and Romaine 2.0, or is it just Derek and Romaine? You call it whatever you want. I mean, we we could have we could be here for three episodes about <laughs> Derek and Romaine branding and everything. Because, like I, because we, what John and I wanted to talk about, he mentioned earlier, is you're also now in the cruise the cruise oh, ship business. Oh yeah, we want to talk about cruising. So we want to talk about the DNR cruises and some of the events they're doing uh, when we get back. So we're gonna take a quick break. We'll be back in a couple seconds. Stay with us. Brought to you by Volkswagen. Visit VW.com to learn more. Now, back to the Focus Group with Tim and John. Glamour today is nothing but a tight skirt, loose hips, and wet lips. An entertaining look at the world of business. Make it work. Make it work. Make it work. Make it, make it work. 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 Hey, welcome back to the Focus Group. John Nash with Tim Bennett, and we are joined by the infamous... Derek and Romaine. Yeah, I, think that's I like infamous yeah. because, you know, there, is there anything above? Infamous means you're top of the, you know, infamy heap. heap. Probably means you're on the lamb, like the police. <laughs> like, well, that like, could be happening yeah, with that us. Could be. Back with us are the gay Bonnie and Clyde. <laughs> <laughs> that's very true. So um, a huge, huge aspect of, of your incredible uh, listener base and of the what you guys do has been a surprise to us, frankly. Uh, okay. When you began doing this, I was like, this is such an unusual thing. And it's a big thing in what you guys do. And it's the cruises, yeah. the DNR cruises. And how many a year do you do? We are now doing two a year. Two a year. Yeah. And you were the first show to do them on yeah, I right? I'd say. Yeah. Then everyone else rubbed their ass well, on them. Actually, and everyone no, else. I <laughs> only, uh, Lance Bass is the only one who's also done a cruise. Frank did one. Frank, that was an advertiser on Frank's show that came through Sirius XM. Yeah. Okay. And because they had approached us, we were already doing our cruises, and we were like, uh, I don't think we'll sell Cruise One, but we will definitely take that free cruise in the Mediterranean. <laughs> since yeah. since yeah. John and I were just on Saturdays, we had co cobbled up this Staten Island cruise we were going to do. Uh, yeah, a card Katie table. Was help us with a blender. <laughs> Katie would have a blender. We five days like you guys. We thought, well, we can do the Staten yeah, Island the ferry. It's a token, right? right? So um, awesome. so you do. T so what, what are the two that are going to be the next two that are coming up? Uh, so we have uh, Hot Mex, oh. uh, which is coming up in October. We're sailing out of Los Angeles. We're going down to Mexico. It's going to be a lot of fun. That's October 2017. Really? <laughs> yeah, October 2017. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, and still room still to book? Yes, yeah, okay. And who's the cruise line you use for uh, this? That is Princess. Princess Cruises. Um, oh, my then, God. Just like the Love Boat, right? Yes, yeah. it is. It is actually, that is their itinerary. It <laughs> okay. Is, uh, it is oh, the, oh, the Ruby... <laughs> So that was that was our first one that we went on, wasn't it? The Ruby Princess. Yes, it was. That yeah. was our very first uh, Derek and Romaine cruise yep. that we did. Uh, and then we also have Miami Madness. It's coming up in February of 2018. We're sailing out of surprise Miami, uh, <laughs> and we're going to the Western Caribbean, and uh, that'll be a lot of fun. Do you know where you're hitting in the Western Caribbean? Do you know where you're stopping? Uh, Roatan, uh, Belize, uh, Harvest Key, their private island. 
and he remembers uh, this one so other place. Isn't it? I'm, I'm impressed. I was just going over the shore excursions <laughs> yesterday, um, but I tend not to get off the boat, so I never know where we are. So what was what was the happy accident as to how this this has really taken this off is, with you guys? Yeah. The cruises yeah. is really Derek's baby, and I just come in as the cruise director to put together the events on the ship. So I'm going to let Ter Derek. You just tell him everything. <laughs> so uh, when we very first started doing our show in 2003. Um, for most people, radio was a local phenomenon, right? You oh, turn yeah, on your radio, totally. you know the local DJ, he's doing a giving a t-shirt giveaway at a car wash, whatever it is, right? And with Sirius, when we launched at Sirius, that was national radio. And so one of the things I thought about was how can we create a more local experience with the people who listen to the show? People are used to radio being local. We're in a community. Romaine and I had been to a million glad dinners and mm -hmm. pride events oh, and whatever. Man, yeah. The gay community, they like to come together at a gay bar or at an annual event, whatever it is. So we started doing a lot of events, and I dragged Romaine to every cheap motel oh, in America. Everywhere. <laughs> every pride event. Everywhere. Uh, every cheap we, motel we in do. America. No, oh, Derek loves a $49 a well, night hotel. That's my price point. Mm -hmm. oh, and yeah. if they make free waffles in the morning, that's exactly. even better. Yeah. No. We got a hot meal. No. And some bed bugs. Yeah. No. <laughs> and hookers out front. Oh, yeah. oh. that happened. One, one time, and it, she was across the street. There was like a sex toy shop yeah, across okay. the street, and she was sort of across the street from the motel, but it was not a nice motel. Although there was a wedding there the weekend we were there, so oh, it wasn't yeah. that bad. But there was also a fake up potted plant outside my room that was over a nasty stain on the carpet. It was not a nice place. Okay. It was a murder hotel. So, so this is where you would meet your fans. Yeah, right. oh, yeah. So we would meet <laughs> listeners at various places and they would meet each other and we developed a rapport. We would go to places over and over again. And, uh, and then a few years later, we had uh, uh, Kelly, Greg and Kelly from Our Family Vacations on our yep. show, and they said, hey, we're leaving on a cruise out of New York in a couple of weeks. Why don't you come with us? You can record a couple of shows on the ship. And so we did that. We had a great time, and then we did an Alaska cruise with them, and then we yep. did a land-based vacation with them in Florida. And one of the things that we noticed is that people who listened to the show were booking on the Our Family Cruise just to spend the I'm week. with you guys. Yeah. Okay. And they did not have kids. They just wanted to go. And, and so I said to Romaine, I said, look, uh, we're dummies. Uh, <laughs> we love Greg and Kelly, but why are we throwing business their way when we could be doing our own cruises? Yeah. Get our own, like pick our own itineraries, go where we want to go, spend a week, maybe we'll make some money. At the very least, it won't cost the same thing. We'll get a free vacation. I was like, free is my All favorite right. word, so okay. Yeah. Because you like money. I yeah. do. <laughs> so we, we started doing them in 2003, and we didn't make any money on the first two, uh, but we did, we were, we, it was very clear, very, immediately that we were on to something. Uh, from the very first cruise we did, we had 25 people, but they glued themselves to each other. Because at first we thought, oh, they're just gonna be, only wanna hang out with us, but we yeah, really Yeah, I was curious about them. They wanna hang out with each other. Yeah, they don't care. After like day two or three on any one yeah, of our they cruises, care. they could care less about us. It, 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 it's, it's this, I, I kind of describe it as- This is fascinating. Oh, it is fascinating. It, it's become the most fascinating part of the DNR cruises for me, in the, in, is watching it happen. So you have all these strangers who get on the ship and they have one thing in common, they love DNR. Derek and Romaine. Yeah. And, and, and I always look at them as, uh, a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them have something that makes them different from like the society that they're living in. Whether maybe they're a little socially awkward or maybe they're a little nerdy or there's just some little quality about their personality that, that kind of has set them apart in their life and they've always felt that way. Like a B-52s concert. Right. Yeah, and then they get together <laughs> and it's they're like magnets. They just come together and they're just like jump, jump, and they find their tribe. It is, it is the craziest thing to witness and yet you see these relationships form over a series of seven days and some of these listeners will tell you they have met their extended family like to them that is who right. they have met their best friends and their extended so family. how do and one of my big questions when i knew we were talking to you about this is how does the rest of the ship react to your gang <laughs> it's there? A, it, it could be a mixed bag uh, <laughs> most it's usually time, pretty good yeah most of the, our group is fun yeah we're the life of the party and we have you know, land, they wear lanyards around their necks and everybody's got DNR shirts and whatever. And so we get a lot of questions. Ooh, who's this group? And we, we tend to get hangers on. Uh, they often think that DNR are getting married on the ship. That <laughs> happens a lot. Oh, a lot. They're like, who is DNR? Are they getting married? Oh, they like, sell Avon. Yeah, yeah, they are. Kinda. <laughs> you know, we did have, when we went to Alaska, uh, 
people comp- went to the went to the desk and complained that there was a lesbian couple in the room next to them. <laughs> and uh, the front desk said, oh, are they being loud or something? He's like, no, they're lesbians. It's like, well, I'm sorry. You know, we're not moving you and we're not moving them. You know, if you can't deal with lesbians existing then you should probably find another cruise line really someone yeah, said yeah. there's yeah. lesbians wow. in the room next so, to us. But oh that, i mean that's the that's the example of something that was a bad situation but even then it didn't really impact our group because no one really knew about it except for the the listeners who overheard it but generally speaking everyone on the ship uh is very very nice to our group i i haven't heard any really negative things and you're there to have a good time everyone's there for a good people time. people often right. want to join our group yes. because we're so like we're fun we come in with our rainbow lays and we're ready to have a good time and everyone's like who's this fun group group how can we how can we be a part it's a vacation people are on vacation when they see people having fun they want to have fun too yeah. that's why they booked that's why they're there so our group just brings a lot of fun and you bring your family uh, I, I do bring them sometimes. I've Derek has always tried to get me to leave him at home. <laughs> and I got to say, he's right. I should leave them home more often. Uh, but I do bring the family. Romy, you know, I always tell my daughter, I'm like, you don't even realize how lucky you've got. I'm like, you've swam with some dolphins. You've been to Alaska twice. I'm like, do you even realize all of the things that I, that that no, this show they don't. It allows they you don't. to do. She will. She One will. day she, she will. will. Yeah. And, all you yeah. have to do in exchange is keep your room clean, which she doesn't do. But I'll tell you why Iris isn't allowed <laughs> to go anymore. So we were talking about the hot Mex cruise and how infamous it is. So the last time we went to Mexico, Iris's motherland, uh, she drank too much tequila and ended up peeing on the dock next to the ship in front of a whole gaggle of listeners. Ah. And ever since then, I was like, oh, no, this is not happening. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I was like, I got to draw the line right here in, in the sand. In <laughs> fairness, Romaine had her room key, so she couldn't get on the ship. Oh. And Romaine was shopping <laughs> at the port. Oh, that, that is that not exactly how that happened. That's secondary no, That's aspect. not exactly how that happened. She wandered off in a drunken stupor but she, with she our child. Her, did she have a room key? No, because she left it with me. Yeah, I ain't seen. Now, Derek, are you <laughs> single? My, uh, I'm single, and my mother is coming on Hot Max. Oh. And I was going to say, if you, if you met any, you haven't met anyone along the Oh, I trip? can't. Uh, on the very first cruise we did, I did sleep with another passenger on the ship, and oh. that was stayed a secret for maybe ten seconds. seconds. <laughs> and I realize I do not have the ability to get laid because it's all everyone will talk about. So oh yeah, it is a real bummer. What I happened to the one honest. guy you were wa- you were about to get oh, laid? Yeah. This so is the best story. We were on this. the New York sailing, and there was this hot guy who was traveling with his mother course gay guy with his mother on the ship and so we like, <laughs> love these you stories. know every night on the ship people are at the bar and then the bar shuts down at whatever one two in the morning and everyone's fire sale outside Drifts, yeah. right yeah like stared us pizza in p-town yeah. and so he turns to me and he's like let's get out of here we all know what that means i was like yeah you bet let's go <laughs> got my own room let's go and so we're leaving and uh and uh so we we go and then we're taking the stairs because you always take the stairs that's how you don't get fat on a cruise true so we're taking the stairs and uh as we were going between decks the staircases on cruise ships they're open yeah like ventilated between the steps and as we're going up somebody on one of the decks one of the listeners is walking by like ooh, there's derek <laughs> Ooh, they're going something's gonna happen <laughs> and we got up to the next floor and he's like well good night <laughs> and it was not even a warm handshake <laughs> oh those bitches they yeah. kept me from getting laid the guy was hot Locked him. i was I will, so say, I will say derek i don't want to talk out of school but you and i did an event in philadelphia and you had a porn star with you. i did yes what was his name well, i was having a midlife crisis which one <laughs> bobby rail <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. I did have a. Wait, wait. Well, I was having a bit. I was crisis. jealous. I was like, well, Derek. I had, uh, you know, I had had a dysfunctional thing with another guy. <laughs> I don't even want to say we were dating. That's how dysfunctional it was. And uh, I was not feeling good about it. And so the way that I felt better about it was to sleep with a very hot porn star who had recently gotten out of prison. Prison, yeah. I remember murder. you said that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> recently it gone out of prison. It was quite an event. Oh, no. I mean, like death. days before they started dating. Yeah. It, it was probably four months from when you met that yeah. he had been in solitary confinement in the state of Florida. So, <laughs> true story. Yeah, that's all. Well, I remember true. you saying they just got out of prison. I'm like, oh my god. And yeah. Madonna's brother was there, and they introduced him by the so wait. Name. Madonna's brother, yeah, Chris was there. Yeah, yeah. That uh, was I, he's a cone. They called. He was smoking. Oh, no. He was smoking something in his hotel room, and he set off the fire alarm in the middle <laughs> yeah. of the night. Oh, yeah, I remember quite, that. Yeah, it was a great. It this was, is that was a fun great event. Tim yeah. still <laughs>, laughs about this event and about how the two of you are like, oh my god, what's going on here? You know, this cruise ship, this fooling around on the cruise ship. This reminds 
reminds me of my friend Tony, a.k.a. Trish. When we used to go out to the Pines years ago, Fire Island Pines, rule number one with Tony, uh, with anybody in our house, was get a phone number, take it to the city. Nothing could have happened. For, for this guy, nothing happened out there, because if nothing happened, nothing could be gossiped about. True. Smart, <laughs> yes. But it kind of is a killjoy. <laughs> it is, because, you know, the group is big now, and I'll be honest, there have been some people who have sailed with us that I would totally hit that. Yeah. And uh, I have been unable to do so. And Dang. so it's irritating. But got your talent. Yeah, yeah. Your talent, you're the stars, yeah. I don't know, you know. You know, there uh, there are trade offs with any job, and I guess this is That's one of them. Well, I was just I, mean, I was just I, I would get my pick of the litter, but I was just wondering if anybody anyone's going to talk about it. I was just wondering if anybody settled you down yet. So yeah. now listen. So thanks for joining us. I want bef before we go, I want you guys to give everyone the the load on how to contact you, how to subscribe, how to how to find you. Super easy. Go to DerekandRomaine.com. There's a little link. Subscriptions. Click on that. Go in, pick what you want. You can get a month, three months. So Derek and Romaine .com, Derek yeah. and A N D. If we did a crew, oh, there's the candle. Yeah. Yep. If and there's a candle on our homepage right yep. there. You can see it. Uh, and I would also say if you want to know more about our internship program and the studio that we built here in New York, dnrstudios.com is a website. It has all the information. And you guys, if you if you're a lucky enough fan and you get to come to the city and you see the studio. Like we did. Yes. Yeah. You'll have a lot of fun because it's a very it's a custom built thing. It is super cool. Now, a lot of our listeners have been chiming in with you guys need to go on a Derek Romain cruise. You if do. we ever, if we ever did a cruise, would it be the Mex one, do you think? No. Oh yeah, no, we do the Mexican one. The, the one out from, of Miami. No, the one Miami from, one. I would recommend Miami for you guys. I would do the one out of Miami. Not from, Miami not from LA. Fun. You can do LA, I'll do Miami. We're, we're also there you go. We're, we're going to soon announce our summer uh, 2018 sailing in the next week or so when we finalize the details. I think when we announce that one, you're going to want to go. Might That's be the, the one you're going to want to go on. Is it in Europe? I Maybe. Can't I can't yet. say where, but speaking a foreign language might be a plus, plus, plus. Oh, wow. That's yeah. cool. Oh, I like this yeah. idea. You know, yeah. But no, we've seriously gotten a lot of people who are like, please, please do this. Oh, no, you'd for, love I think it. it's for the same reason of. May, like, do you guys do uh, do you do talking events every day, or do you do like a, a mini show type um, thing? Or? We do we do a listener roundtable on every cruise where the, we we get together like five or six listeners and have them discuss the show from a listener's perspective. And you're mic'd. Uh, and yeah, they're all yeah, mic'd, and we record it, and then we play it usually after the fact. Um, but that's really the only like recorded have, stuff that we do. And then we have our award show. Oh yeah. Where at the end of the cruise, Romaine and I reward bad behavior yeah. from the previous week. <laughs> the listeners are uh, sketchy, is... and they tell us everyone's sketchy behavior. Uh -huh. We had somebody who got really drunk and barfed at the muster station on the first day. So if you've we ever been an hour being ship, on the ship, you know ship. Okay. how early that is. That's three in the afternoon on the yeah. first day. <laughs> they show you how the lifeboat works. <laughs> somebody threw up there because they were already that drunk. And uh, we've had quite we've had quite some A plus behavior from the listeners. So we're happy to reward them. To be rewarded, yeah. Very nice medals for how them. How many nights is the Miami cruise? Seven. 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 Yeah. Well, Tom, we'll we'll talk. Have about you been it. in a? I've not been on one of those boats. I, this the only way I would do one again would be a DNR. I would like to go with a group. And, and, I think and I think fun. that would be the key. It, yeah. I, I did a Norwegian cruise line that sailed out of New York down to K, uh, Port Canaveral and yeah. some of the yeah. other stuff. Oh boy! And the guy we went with, well, that was, was obsessed different. with karaoke and bingo. Oh no! And didn't drink. Oh no! What? Then we, uh, had, yeah. then we, had that. we do have an awesome karaoke on our cruise, but only one or two. And actually, if I if I may say, he was darn good at karaoke, and he won a singing competition. He was a clown. So he actually an, an actor. Truly, he, he won, and he did great. But um, it was a fun experience. Um, you hated it. Don't sit I here just and felt say like it was a, a prisoner. Fun you hated it. It wasn't anybody that was on the ship. It was great. I just felt like a prisoner. You know what he didn't like? Oh, no. he, it was too structured. Every moment was taken. You had to do something. The, the guy a, had your your schedule. It's a bit structured. You don't like. Yeah, yeah you got to pick and choose. Like we yeah. tell our listeners, it's your vacation. Pick and choose what you want. You don't have come to, do to an everything. event. Yeah. Don't come to an event. We don't care. We, <laughs> only have, we only have one mandatory event. It's our coffee clatch at the like the first full day on the ship, where we go over the itinerary, we answer any questions, whatever, and then we have some group dinners on the first two nights, so the people. People can get to know each other. We really try to use the first two days on the ship for people to meet each other and Acclimate, get to know each other. Because yep. once yeah. you start getting into the ports and everything, a couple of oh, days yeah. in, people You're start getting off, things. drifting off. And yep. so we do have, we want to make sure there are events. So if people want to do group events, we have them available. But believe me, people start going Doing off on their, their own. own. What will our event be? I don't know yet. Brush up your resume. <laughs> if you join us, we will have that'll you. Be, that'll be full. You guys can MC the listener panel. 
If you, oh, that'd you be fun. We had Adam Sank do it on the last one, and people really liked that somebody else was asking the questions. Wait, yeah, well, we're against the clock, but so Adam Sank, is he, he's now on, on Saturday, right? Uh, yeah, we have, him, we have him doing a show every Saturday all through June at 3 p.m. Eastern time. Um, we set up a special special section on our uh, our website, DirkRomain.com, where you can go in and you can listen to his show live for free. You don't have to subscribe. We, Excellent this idea. This is just kind of us celebrating Pride, and we wanted to share a great you're giving, uh, You're giving. Yeah. The community. Well, Adam, trying to. For pride. We're, trying. Yeah. We're trying to get back. Always. Thank you for being. Thank you, <laughs> thank for, you guys. Thank you of course. Thank you for having us. Thanks for being our first guest to kick off Pride and kick off hey. June. We Happy appreciate pride. it. Happy Pride. Happy Pride. Everybody head over to DerekandRomaine.com to learn more about the inter internship program, the events, and get some cool swag like the guys are wearing here in the studio. And we want to thank our partners here in the Focus Group. Thank you to Deep Discount. Be sure to head over to focusgroupradio.com. Click on the Deep Discount logo. Start shopping away for lots of great items at great prices. And also our friends at Volkswagen of America who are now in their eighth year supporting us here in the Focus Group. If it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be able to join you each week. We really do appreciate all they do for us and the LGBT community. If you're in the market for a new car, be sure to check them out. Put them on your shopping list. Go to VW.com to learn more. Don't text and drive. Stay alive. That's my threat. Don't text and drive. Stay you're, alive. You're Have a great week, everyone. And John, the leprechaun. Happy Pride. There you go. <laughs> See you next week. It's the Focus Group with Tim Bennett and John Nash, formerly on Sirius XM Satellite Radio and now accessible on all platforms. Subscribe, like, and rate us on your platform of choice. Learn more at focusgroupradio.com.